Hi guys, it's Anud and I'm back with another video on how to make a very simple app. And it's time to answer the question of how to get our app published in a store. The store we will be focusing on in this video is the Google Play Store. Let's start with the bad news first. You have to pay $25 to be able to publish apps in the Play Store. But you don't have to pay to test your app on your phone. So let's get this working first. Now we have some options to choose from. I've made a list of what I think are the most well-known tools you can use to create your app. Now let's go through them one by one. So PhoneGap is basically what started it all. It's an HTML viewer that is sort of embedded into your app and then it just shows your HTML stuff. Uh, it's a commercial product. You can download it and do anything you want with it. But uh, if you want to use the cloud build, which is the easiest to use, you have a limit of one app. So I think we are not going to use this. Then we have Intel XDK and it also uses a cloud build system. So your code is uploaded to the Intel servers and then you get your uh, application back in packaged form. Uh, this one is a 238 megabyte download. You do need to register on their website but there is no limit of one app. So this is an option. Then we have Cordova, which is the open source version of PhoneGap. You can download it, but you have to download the Android SDK as well to be able to create your Android APK file. This will result in a one and a half gigabyte download, which is a lot, I guess. And then you have the option to use Visual Studio with Cordova, which is basically just some tools uh, that integrate it into Visual Studio. So it's a bit easier to use, but this will force you to download three gigabytes of stuff. So if we look at this, then probably the easiest thing to get started with will be Intel XDK. And you can just find it using Google, I guess. Um, on the website, you can just hit the download link and you will be brought immediately to the download. You can install this, register your account and let's see how it works. So after installation, we are greeted with this screen and it's best to sign up if you intend to actually use this tool. Uh, I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. And as you can see, you can create new projects from templates, open some samples and do stuff like this but we already have an app. So all you need to do is import your HTML5 code base into a new project. So let's click this and let's see if it just works. So here's my project. Let's hit OK. And continue. Let's uh, think of a name. Like shopping app. And then we have a problem, an unsupported folder structure. So it's telling us that uh, the files actually need to be in a folder inside the project folder. And it's suggesting us to call it www. So let's do that. Let's cancel out. Go here. Create this folder. And put our stuff inside it. Like this. So now it's all there. And then import again. And now it works. So we could pick the standard HTML5 as we are not using any advanced features that require Cordova. And let's not do the quick tour. No thanks. Okay. So this actually contains a pretty nice HTML editor. So you can use this for editing your code if you want. Um, you can also simulate your app. Let's try it out. So we can choose from several devices like the Lenovo K900, which is a, a basic Android phone, I guess. Let's run it. So with the simulator, we can try our app. Everything seems to work. So great, it's time to create an APK file, which is a file we can install on an Android device. And for this, we go to the build tab. Now we can build for several platforms like Android, iOS, and Windows 10. And we're going to build for Android. Now there are some warning signs of stuff that we have to fix. And the most important one is that there is no developer certificate found. So let's click here and fix it. 
So why do we need a developer certificate? Well, we need to sign our app uh, basically like you would sign a document with your autograph and you will have to do this for any store also the Windows Store or the, the Apple uh, App Store basically to prove that the app you are publishing is actually yours so I could create a new developer certificate and you can just I don't know make up some stuff here um, like a key store description uh, let's call it uh, The shopping app key store the alias will be shopping app and then we need to think for password and now we can check this so we don't need to enter it again and some details about who is the owner which is uh, me And hit save. Now, this is sort of creating your digital autograph to sign your package with. So it doesn't really matter what you fill in here, as long as you can remember this stuff. If you ever need to, to reinstall your Windows and XDK, then you need to get this if you want to publish an update for your app. Because updates have to be signed with the same key as the original version. So let's save this for now. and then fill out the rest of the publishing details. So an app ID, which is basically uh, a unique identifier, uh, required sort of like a URL, but then just an identifier. So you usually use the company website or your own website as an identifier, and then the application name, like for example, uh, com Arnold uh, shopping app. And we can enter some stuff like description, who's the author, and also below, very important, pick the correct developer certificate. And of course, we can pick icons and splash screens here. Now, I haven't designed any icons, so I'm not going to do this right now, but if you have icons for your app, then you can set them up here. But basically, I'm just going to go to build, and as you can see, the warning is gone, no critical errors. All we have to do is unlock the developer certificate. So if we click here, we can unlock the certificate with the passphrase we used previously. Okay, and then we can build our app by hitting start builds. Oops, and of course I have to click Android and then hit start builds. And now it's uploading my code to the Intel servers, which will turn it into an APK file. And if I wanted, I could just copy the APK to my phone, run it, and it will install the app. And this step can take a while, maybe up to five minutes. All right, and it has finished. So you can just click the download button and you will get a zip file. Let's save it. And this will contain the APK. So there are two versions and we want uh, to upload the ARM version. So this one. Now there is something I'd like to show you. Uh, this file is almost 26 megabytes and that's pretty big for a simple app like this. So we can actually reduce its size. If we go to the build settings, so let's go there again. So what's actually making this app so big? Well, it's, and let's expand this. It's the crosswalk system, sort of the, the integrated browser that shows our HTML. We can actually not embed it into our app, but use a shared library for this. And this will just use the version that's installed on your phone. And if there is nothing installed on your phone, it will download it. So this will reduce our file size significantly. If you want to know more, more about this, then you can go there Oops, and read this article. So let's choose share this time and see the difference in file size. So we're going to go back to build and then once again, hit start builds. And again, it's going to take a few minutes and there it is. So let's click the download button again, save it. 
and now our file is only four megabytes so it's still pretty big but it's a lot better than 25. so let's copy this to our desktop and as I said, you can copy this file to your phone, run it, and it will install your app. Now we would like to place our app in the store, and that's a whole different story. For this, we need to go to the Google Play Store Developer Console. And you can find this at play.google.com slash apps slash publish. And if you don't have an account, you need to register and, as I said, pay the $25. After you've done this, you can create an application. Let's just call it the shopping app. And then you can upload your APK file. So let's pick the one that's four megabytes. I guess it's okay by Google. So we can publish this. Uh, of course, we need to enter some data about our app, like the title, a short description, and all this kind of stuff. Add icons and banners for the Play Store. And after you've filled out all this stuff, then this button will become enabled, and you can publish it to the Play Store. So I won't actually publish this app in the Play Store, as it's pretty useless in its current state. But I'm quite sure you will manage on your own, if you ever want to publish an app to the Play Store. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope it's somehow useful to you. Uh, thanks for watching until the end and maybe see you again in another series.